Greetings Ivy Artist, I'm Miss A and today I'm going to be helping you with I was going to be filming a really exciting video in the Contemporary and Modern Art Museums in Ljubljana but apparently I'm too small and insignificant so we can change that you and I can change that. I'll provide the content. You guys like, subscribe, share, and press the notification bell. Deal? Okay, thank you. Today I wanted to kind of cover what do you actually do when you get to an art museum or a gallery. I would recommend an art museum more than a gallery um, especially if you're looking for lots of variety and ideas for your work because art museums are usually bigger and they simply have more choice so um, one distinction I would like to make it is something that people get confused by and it is what is the difference between modern and contemporary art uh, the terms modern and contemporary are very specific in art. They're, they're kind of a little bit different to when they're applied to anything else. So basically, um, modern art is art from the 1880s to the 1960s, let's say. And then contemporary art is from the 1960s to the present day. Uh, now these dates are very, or years are very, very kind of vague not everybody agrees with them some people think that modern art started earlier so the 1860s and some people uh, you know think that contemporary art started in the 1950s 60s and even 70s so round about there um, one of the main differences I think is that in terms of how we perceive art now modern art is slightly more uh, traditional in that it, it most of the modern art produced is in the form of um, either paintings or sculptures of course there are other forms but that's basically the, 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 the main kind of mode of expression whereas in contemporary art new additions would be things like conceptual art and performance art as well as others so be aware of that because usually contemporary and modern art uh, is somehow um, identified and curated separately and not always the case obviously sometimes it's a very interesting kind of crossovers but generally speaking you either go to a modern museum of art or a contemporary museum of art probably what you will be dealing mostly with is contemporary art and this is because contemporary art is art that has many different voices so uh, not only has it become you know art has become uh, kind of more global to allow you know people from all over the world to kind of create art and to express themselves and express their cultural identity or or issues or whatever influences um, and also, you know, there is more of, of a female presence, uh, so women are very active in contemporary art, um, and also there is, uh, you know, oth others, the other, which means that people who have not necessarily been very um, well represented traditionally. Uh, because traditionally, I mean, let's say, if we look at the linear art timeline, it's really basically talking about the Western kind of trajectory. Of course, everything is very, very vague and, and, and kind of made to fit into a neat little, you know, progression line. Art is very, very um, complex. So this is one way of organizing it. So, you, you know, you have the prehistoric art and then you have the kind of, I don't know, medieval and then pre-Renaissance and then the Renaissance and then you kind of neatly go into the modern art what is 
interesting, I mean, and I'll be talking about this a little bit more in a future video, is that when you look at art like that, there are interesting ways in which to track that progress. How artist decisions were made based on what came before them. So in a way they were influenced by what was already there, um, but also they wanted to carve out new ways for themselves. So let's say that you are now in a contemporary museum. It is very easy to uh, get overwhelmed. And I think in this video what I'm trying to do is to actually give you really kind of um, like a mission if you like. I'm trying to focus that visit so that it is not overwhelming, that you don't kind of get confused about what you're actually doing there. Uh, so my technique, and this is by no means something that I'm saying you should do, but that's how I cope with you know, uh, art. I do get very excited about art, so it is important that I um, try and experience it in a way that you know I can take as much as I can in, especially when I'm traveling. So basically my technique would be to kind of go and look at all the rooms. So just kind of do a grand tour really, really quickly and look for things that stand out. I'm not saying things that you like and don't like because that's a very limited way of looking at art, but things that you find genuinely interesting. So look for stuff that you think, oh my God, that's a really, you know, I wouldn't have thought of that, well, that's a very interesting way of using, I don't know, a certain material or, you know, that technology is, I've never seen that before done in this way or used in this way. A scale and, and really you're, you're bringing to this experience all your senses. So I would not recommend going with a friend who is not interested in art because then you're just going to be rushed. Make sure that you commit to this visit because you will discover a lot more than if you're kind of not very focused. Now, so what is it that you actually want to do? So after you've done this like quick run around of like, oh wow, oh my god, oh my god, okay. And you're running around and thinking, oh, there's so much, to, you know, that I want to look at. Take note of what you want to come back to, okay? And then once you've done that, you come back and you linger at the pieces that you really, really want to look at. Now, that's one thing. So that you're kind of doing this instinctively, I guess. You're responding to work very, very quickly. And then you're kind of, uh, you know, devoting a little bit more time to that piece and you then start your investigation or discovery of it. So even then it's still a lot to do and it's still pretty vague. So what I want to do is kind of bring you back to the actual components of your IV course, the actual areas that require you to uh, or that can focus you on gathering information. What do I mean by that? You are there to gather information for three areas of your IB Visual Arts course. And the three areas are your art making practice, which is your process portfolio, your theoretical practice, which is your comparative study, and your curatorial practice, which is your exhibition. In order to demonstrate what I mean, I'll be drawing a diagram. to get away from my bird Shanti I'm afraid because it was very kind of loud today so this is why I'm continuing in a different room right anyway so essentially you are gathering information for the three practices that make up the Ivy visual arts course for the art making practice your process portfolio you are asking how artwork is made in terms of you know uh, materials, media, putting things together, construction, technical kind of information 
uh, then for the theoretical practice or your comparative study component you are asking about why the artwork is made in the way that it is you're also asking how but let me let me demonstrate so for for why you're thinking about why the artwork was made in this specific way what kind of influences are there in this artist's artwork you're also thinking about themes that the artist is trying to tackle in their work so is it a political theme is it a personal theme you're also thinking about the identity of the artist what kind of identity uh, does the artist have what kind of influences are they um, allowing to seep through into the work are the influences uh, cr you know very kind of obvious or are they actually an issue for the artist for example so in the case of for example feminist work is the fact that a woman is producing that artwork is it something that they're addressing in their work um, or being a, an artist of a specific culture for example is that obvious in their work or is there you know you wouldn't know where the work is from at all these are like interesting questions you're also looking at how they're communicating uh, those things so what are the strategies that these artists are uh, applying to their work in order to communicate certain um, ideas that they want to communicate so that's really kind of like the research part of your uh, work all the information that you're gathering of course is something that you are going to be thinking about and applying to your own work so you're thinking about your own identity you're thinking about the themes that you want to tackle and ideas that you want to explore in your work and then in the last practice, which is your curatorial practice, which is the exhibition component, you're again gathering information about how is the artwork that you're looking at presented. Um, is it something that is heavily led by the artist and the curator? Are you being guided in a very specific way? Or is it pretty open-ended? You're noticing things like is it framed is it is it framed in a traditional way protruding from the wall is it hanging and if it's hanging you know why is it hung at this level so you're asking questions about the way it's presented um, notice also the environment that it's in um, is there a sense of kind of intimacy is it a small room is it is it are you kind of uh, very close to the work or is the room very kind of sparse and spartan with, without any distractions? For example, minimalists like to show their work in, a, in almost like a factory-like setting. And their work, again, is also very um, minimalist in the sense that it has no distractions, no frills, there's no... Um, almost there's no trace of the artist. Is it next to another work? Is there a conversation going on between that work and the work that you're looking at? Is it important that the two are together? Um, again, going back to the environment, it could be the colors in the room. It could be the lighting in the room. It could be sounds. It could be anything. It could be the scale of the work. Um, and how is it towering over other things? Or is it very, very small? Uh, is it hidden in a box or under something? Again, think about why it's presented in the way it's presented so that, again, you can go away and think about what, how you want to influence the audience or not, how you want to present your work and what you want the audience to get out of it. One of the criteria for your work is that there is a coherence to your artwork so you will be producing many many uh, pieces how are they arranged um, to work together how can you present them in a way that you know makes sense so again all these bits of information that you are gathering for the different practices or the different components of your work uh, you are going to think about explore further and develop in your own artwork that's the whole point when you're gathering information 
it will probably happen in quite an organic way. You're, you're, you're going to be thinking about all these things. But it's probably a good idea to know that there is a structure to the information that you're gathering and you're basically covering the three different components. So in your sketchbook, in drawing, when you're drawing, there's, there's an amazing, you're incredibly engaged in analyzing the work visually. Right, so that's a really helpful way of, of looking at work um, is to actually try and draw it because you will spend so much time visually um, collecting information about that artwork. It's really an excellent technique to uh, analyze a work of art by actually drawing it. And then you can add things like, you know, the color scheme that is being used or uh, make notes or annotations as to what the texture is like. Look at the surface of, of paintings or sculptures or uh, whatever it is that you're looking at. Make sketches. Sketches are a really good way of very quickly producing a kind of a map of what it is that you're looking at. So for example if uh, you're looking at something suspended or something that it kind of travels or wraps around the room. Just make a little sketch uh, of it to kind of really, to, to get a really good feeling of the flow of the work. Yes, you can always take a photograph and do it. Do, definitely take photographs. But again, like I said, when you spend a little bit of time trying to draw something, it's that much more engaging. You're, you're collecting a lot more information when you're not just clicking a button. So let's say that you have come across this work. You're looking at this work from a distance at this point, okay? So what are you thinking about? What does the work look like? Does it remind you of anything? Uh, are there any specific thoughts that are going through your head? What is your instinctive or initial reaction? to the work. Once you get up close you may think, oh I wasn't expecting it to be made out of this, for example. Maybe the details are a little bit surprising to you, okay? So then you start thinking, okay, so why is this work presented in such a way? Is it, is it presented in front of you or are you, is it more engaging than that? Are you surrounded by the work, right? Uh, what is the significance of the, the material? Why is the artwork made out of what it's made out of? You're also asking questions of, you know, what are the concepts behind this work? What is the artist trying to um, explore in this work? Um, why is he using this specific material? in order to explore those concepts? Why is he presenting this work in this way? Why is it hung this way? Why is it surrounding you or, or why is it just draped in front of you, for example? And then once you've, once you've kind of thought about this, and, and it's really good to just jot down your initial ideas and then compare them to, to the ones that you actually make once you know a little bit more about who the artist is and what the artwork is about. Right? So once you've done your initial notes, you can then look at the artist's name and you'll discover that the artist is El Anatsui. Right? I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, I'm not really sure. You know, and then you, you discover, for example, that it's, it's been created a certain year, so you need to kind of look at that. Uh, you need to look at where the artist is from and what was happening during that time. And then, and then you, 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 know, you write all that down and you, you make a sketch possibly and you think about the scale uh, and the, the presentation and the room it's in and what's around it, etc. So you're making all these notes, you know, and then you go home and then you uh, watch the video that I'll be, you know, linking uh, underneath uh, in the blurb. So, and that way you kind of, you, you have your own initial... Um, first-hand observations, so the notes that you made, the photos that you took, the drawings and the sketches that you made and the annotations that you took. So all these things you have in your sketchbook already and then once you get home you, you watch the video and you think about, oh, 
maybe um, I was led in a specific way by the by the artist or no actually I'm completely surprised I wasn't expecting that that would be a theme throughout uh, his work etc so this is just a, a small example of how you might experience work I thought I would include a, an example of somebody's work just to kind of get you going there's endless exhibitions, there's endless artists, there's endless experiences waiting for you out there. So, you know, please don't underestimate this part of your course, which is to visit and experience artwork because it will really, really feed your IB visual art student soul. It's really where the magic happens, where you get to kind of really um, just, just get really inspired and uh, you just grow by experiencing all these types of um, artworks that you know these people uh, the artists have really invested in so it's an incredible privilege and you know I hope you really really enjoy your, yourself so hopefully this has been useful I will be doing another video uh, that really focuses on what should go into your IB uh, sketchbook but today I just thought I would do a quick one because I thought um, it would be useful for those of you who are trying to cram in an art museum or gallery visit before you go back to school and start making your work again. If there are any questions, please let me know in the comments or anything that you'd like me to you know, discuss further or anything at all, please comment in the uh, comment section. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll see you soon. Thank you very much. I'm Miss A. See ya.